Evening everyone, um, it's Wednesday so it's uh, tips video night and tonight we are going to cover something very relevant at the moment, margin fishing for proper carp. Um, I don't know a person that doesn't enjoy margin fishing for carp, really exciting, generally the bigger fish of the day. Um, to catch a big weight in most matches you're going to have to catch some margin fish at some stage so we'll just cover um well why we do it rigs feeding and something that's really important someone did already ask me this question um what we do if we've got a deep edge so that's definitely worth covering so first of all when do we fish in the margins well as soon as the water, as I've covered in other things, as soon as the water gets warm, the fish want to be feeding in shallow water. So it is the ideal place. And it's where carp, we're just focusing on carp tonight, um, where carp come to feed. It's where the happiest feeding in the shallow water. Um, generally, they are always going to turn up at some stage. The conditions do play a part. Um, if it's flat, calm and really sunny, and the water's shallow, they aren't as keen to come in. Um, likewise, when there's a lot of people on the lake in a match situation, when you've got every peg in, it, it, they don't come in so soon. They will come in, but it might be the last half hour of a match. Whereas if you've got a bit of room, um, it depends on the venue as well. Um, they might come in after an hour. It's um, so it's all about knowing the venue and reading the conditions. Uh, ideal conditions are a good ripple, even more so if it's coming into your bank. That is absolutely perfect and, and overcast. Nice warm day. That is perfect. But as we all know, it's not often always perfect. So we'll cover everything. First of all, we will go into the rigs, or we'll, we'll talk about the depth of water we want. Um, the perfect scenario we would have for big carp 18 inches of water right against the bank. Um, the reason you want it right against the bank means you can feed just short of the bank, fish are literally touching the bank with your float, so it's the same as a mud line. The fish come in to feed, they can't get behind your float, so it's one less way of giving you a line bite. Um, and foul hooking, they're big fish generally down the edge, so foul hooking can be an issue. Um, we haven't always got that, that depth. Um, you can catch in shallower water. You get some venues where it's, it slopes away like a, um, like a beach, like float fish farm, one of the venues I fish is like that. Um, some you've got a nice hole to fish some venues. I've talked to about a few different scenarios. Some you've got three foot, some you've got five foot, it's all different. But on the, if we can get shallow water, you want to be in the shallowest water you can, ideally tied to the bank. If it's too shallow, I'd rather come away from the bank and find that 18 inches if it slopes away like a float fish. Um, they just feed that bit more confidently there. Um, what you'll get is if they come in and it's only 10 inches deep, say, and, and it's a big carp, it, it's gonna spook, and then you're not never gonna get a number of fish there. Uh, which isn't what you want. You want to be putting a weight together when you're fishing the edge. Um, so that's that covered. We'll go on to rigs now. I will touch the deeper when we come to feeding and stuff. But rig wise, really, really simple. Um, no messing around. I'll talk about elastics first. As I've said in my videos before, I use the Slick, I'll slick for everything. I use the 18 to 20, the red from edge fishing. Well, I did until this weekend. Um, and I drew, I was fishing at decoy, as I've said in my report on Sunday. Do somewhere where there's a lot of barbel, um, generally. So I used the heaviest one, the, the orange, the 20, 22. And I thought, when I first started using slick, I never really give this one too much time. I thought it was a bit too heavy. Um, didn't catch many barbel, caught lots of big carp and I'm absolutely sold on this one now. Where I'm fishing for proper carp, there's still loads of stretch, more than I thought there was going to be in it. So that's going to be my go-to elastic. Unless the fish are a bit smaller, 
where I will go on back to the step down a grade to the red. Um, I would fish the red if I was fishing a long, if I'm fishing like into a corner or something um, where it's not too snaggy or if the water's really shallow because you, you, you've got a bit of playing before you get them back. So they're going to be playing themselves down and it just lets them run off that bit better. But for fishing shorter, like top six, back to a top kit, um, this is now the one for me, the 2022, the orange. Um, powers up really quickly. I was landing big fish really, really quickly on Sunday on it. Not pulling their heads off. It just powers up nice and lands them easy. Um, all my rigs are, for edge fishing, for carp, are the O23 power micron mainline. We're looking at big fish. We're not looking at messing around. You want to be landing them quick. Don't want to be worrying about them. Um, again, hook lamps are always O20 power micron. No messing around. Hooks are, depending on bait, but I generally fish a sort of 12. I can't go into too much detail about this hook yet, I'd get shot. Um, but any wide gate, heavy wire hook. You want a wide gate because you're going to be fishing big baits down the edge generally. Um, I'm not saying a 12, sometimes a 14 if I'm fishing a bit smaller bait. Um, as at the start of the year, when it's first starting to warm up in the end when they've been hammered. But I'll cover that when we get into sort of October time because there's still a lot of edge fish to be caught, it just changes a bit. I'll do a different video for you. Um, float wise, you'll be amazed, it's not a Malman's float. I say I'm sponsored by them, but for big carp down the edge, they haven't quite got the perfect float for the venues I fish. I'm very lucky around this way. We are catching massive weights. You get lots of fish coming your edge. And I just wanted something that took a bit more shot with a bit bigger bristle. Um, so this is a, this is made by Dot and Down. Um, I know there's a lot, a lot of people use these edge floats. Some very, very well known people. Um, these are, the, they're half a grade, 0.4, but they're actually quite big for their size. Um, I just shot them with six number eights. That is literally it. A bulk. Um, they're really really strong and a two and a half mil bristle which is really important uh, i dot it quite well down to start with so i can read when fish are coming in and see what's happening but when it goes manic like it sometimes do i won't be afraid to take a shot off and have a whole bristle even a tiny bit of the body showing uh, you're fishing big baits they're going to be positive bites you just don't want to be fail hooking fish it's the most important thing you spook when you spend ages trying to get it in you spook what's down your edge um, it's just not very, you're trying to make the most of the last part of the match, put together that winning catch, or in a pleasure session. Um, so yeah, 0 20, 0 023 to 020. For fishing, this floats for fishing in sort of up to two foot. Um, ideally 18 inches, let's say. So it's simply a bulk um, right above my hook lamp, and it's a four inch hook length because you're in a small volume of water, a big carp's gonna fill up half of that rig. Um, and when it swells its tail, it's gonna move everything around. So you want all the shot close to a four inch up there, just so it nails it down. I haven't got them on here because I've only just set some rigs back up, uh, ready for the weekend. This is freshly tied, just for you guys. You're very honored. My wife's not so much, there's tackle everywhere in the living room at the moment. There would be back shot on here. Um, they're even more vital for this than anything else in my eyes. Because you've got big fish coming in, they're going to be blowing the float around everywhere. So you need some back shot very close to the hook. So it instantly anchors it back, otherwise you're going to be blowing around everywhere, fell looking. Um, whereas I'd have one number eight or something like that for most of my fishing, I actually use three number eights or even more for this. So it completely anchors it. I have them quite close to the float, say four or five inches. I do like a short line generally for my edge fishing. There are venues where they're a bit spooky, like Larford, where you're only fishing for a, a lot of pegs, you're only fishing for an odd, and if you're on them end pegs, I don't think it'd probably matter so much because they're solid. But um, then I might fish the two foot line, but I would still have the back shot there and just hold my pole a bit higher. So it's keeping the pole away from the fish, but you need those back shot close to the float to pull it back, to stop it moving about. Um, so that is that rig. That's that's generally what I would call the margin rig. 
the other rib I've got here is for tackling. It's exactly the same line and everything. This is for tackling those sort of three foot to four foot edges where it's deep, but you can still feed a lot of bait there. Um, it's exactly the same rig. It's a six inch hook length this time just because I'm in a bit deeper water. Um, and the float is simply stepped up. This is a Rue Cane 2.2 mil um, cane bristle, wire stem, so it's really, really stable. It takes eight number eights. Again, just in a bulk above the float. Um, it's just so it's a bit more stable in that deeper water. And that's all it's for. Um, but the process would be, would be exactly the same. There are a couple of other rigs I've not set them up because we've covered them already that I'll cover when we go into deep margins. Um, on to bait. Um, it is a bit of personal preference in all honesty and what responds to the venue. For me, given the choice, it's ground bait and dead maggots. That is the one for me. It just lets off so much traction. Ground bait, it, it's like fishing micros against four mils. There's so much more traction because there's more surface area there. Let more flavour out, draw more fish in. Um, so yeah, my I've covered it in the ground bait mixes we've done before, but I'll just go back through it again. Um, most of my venues, local venues, allow two kilos, so it's really simple. One bag of milk krill, which is really potent and red. One bag of super carp, the spotted fin, um, which is really fish meal. The two is perfect. Mix it. You want it damp because you want it to sink onto the bottom when you feed, but. I don't like, some people use really coarse, like proper edge marketed as margin mixes and stuff. I don't want that because one of the key points of using ground bait is you've, you've got your ground bait there, you hook a fish, you want it to cloud back up um, when that fish leaves the peg. You know how when you hook a big fish down the edge you get that big eruption. It'll stir all the bottom up and it'll make a cloud there and while you're playing that fish that cloud will draw the next fish in. Um, where ground bait's not allowed, micro pellets all the way for me, like, like decoy lakes near us, um, that's all micro pellets, uh, and micro pellets and dead maggots. Um, you can get through a lot of micros like it, like decoy is ridiculous at times, you can, you can soon feed six pints of micros, um, same at Rookery, same anywhere, a lot of people like to fish micros and corn, uh, corn is Dead maggots aren't the one, if it's small fish there, you're getting bothered by them. Corn is one for me. Meat is also good where it's allowed. Really like fishing double eight mil meat down the edge, just a few bits of meat in with my ground bait. And again, it's simple. What can work and what you do want to do, even though you're feeding maggots to quite like um, as your feed bait with the ground bait, still putting some micros in with your ground bait, just so there's something always laying there. Um, works really well, so don't be afraid to put some micros in with your ground bait. Um, you just need to make it a little bit wetter again because they will dry it out a little bit. Um, and that's pretty much, we're, we're talking about the ideal depth first, so that is the bait choice I would use. Um, on to feeding, again, depends on your venues, how soon they come in the edge. As I commented, as I've said on one of my videos the other day about float fish, I like to put, if ground bait's allowed and I can use it, I put one cup in with just, I use meat there, so just probably 10 cubes of meat on my edge right at the start of the match. Um, and because it's shallow, you'll know when they start coming down the edge because some people won't go in the edge. You, There's two ways of looking at it. The, you still want to be looking in a match situation when people start catching down the edge is the time to go there. But you may have missed out on a little opportunity a bit earlier. They could come in a bit earlier and you wouldn't know because no one's been down there yet. You could get the first run on it. So I like to put just that one cup. I don't feed it again then until say the last two hours and then I start priming it big time. Just one cup. Um, but say we've, uh, in a six, most of my matches are six hours around this way. After three, three or four, about four hours, um, I would start to give it some bait with ground bait. If there's no signs of fish coming in for anyone, ground bait's really good because you can really attack with it. I wouldn't be afraid to put eight full big cups of ground bait down that edge to make a big base for them 
and then you're waiting for them to come in. I wouldn't top it up until I see fish then, there's going to be a lot of bait there. Um, it is worth feeding it just a bit further out in the lake, maybe only this far in slightly deep water because they will blow it up to where you're fishing. You don't really want to be fishing over that much bait because it, again it will lead to fail hookers. So feed it just in the slightly deeper water, not far, half a metre or so, let them blow it back. Then once you start catching, feeding on it with a big toss pot is the ideal situation, the biggest sort of toss pots with ground bait in or put in a big cup every two or three fish but as soon as the bites dry up um, you've got to read what's going on in the situation to do that but that is the perfect scenario for me. Um, hook bait wise like I say if I'm fishing maggots a big standout bait like 10 dead maggots is the one for me. Um, when there's a lot of fish in the peg, double worm can be really, really good because it's so heavy, it will nail the hook to the bottom. Maggots, even though it's a big bunch of maggots, are still lot quite light and do blow around a bit. That's why I want the heavy rigs, but the worms will just slay there. When you're fishing big baits with worms, we haven't covered worm fishing at all yet. Once you've hooked them on, slap them on the water a couple of times. You don't want them wriggling about and getting on your hook because it could, it could loop around your hook and you won't get a clean hook hold slap them, stun them so they're stretched out and there's a big target bait that stretched right along the bottom then, not a ball, um, it's far far better and you'll get a better hook hold. Uh, again double corn, there's loads of different baits you can fish, it's, it's whatever you like fishing, just make sure you've got a good size bait on that stands out because you're going to be feeding quite a bit of bait. Um, and in all honesty that is, it's quite a simple method, you've just got to do it right, be careful of where you put your flow in relation to your feed, um, that is it. It's, it is a simple method, it's why people love it, you're not fishing a long pole, it's very easy to do, but you've just got to think about where the feed's going. Um, feeding, once the fish are there, it's feeding the smallest amount you can to keep the fish there, or bring the next one in, but a big carp could eat, I could tip a whole tin of corn in, and a carp could eat, a big carp would eat, come in and eat all of that. Um, so don't be afraid to feed plenty of bait. You are fishing for, these fish are now looking for feed when they're down the edge, so they are gonna be eating. It's not like fishing out, just trickling a little bit of bait in. They're coming there to feed and you need to keep them there, so being positive can work. Throwing handfuls of bait on it to make a bit of noise can be good. If you're fishing really close, like some of my venues, fishing just a top kit can be really, really good. If you've got the, if that's your best depth for water, that can be the best place. So that is the perfect scenario done. Um, the other rig for fishing in free foot, I'd still fish exactly the same, that can still work. What I'm gonna go on to now is, if we're faced with an edge where it's all reeds and it's five foot deep or something like that, or even deeper, um, it happens, there's, there's some of the pegs on Magpipe Rookery, I like it. Uh, there's definitely pegs at Decoy that I like it. Um, there's still a lot of fish to be caught there, but you just have to change the approach slightly. Um, now there's a couple of ways we can go about it. First way is dump pot and bait in. We, again, we have to be really, really careful how we do it. Using the, the deeper water rig where I already showed you with the Rube cane on it. Um, that can work, but I, I'd stay away from that one unless I was really struggling going into the last hour. I'd rather be doing it a couple of other ways. Now it depends what is in your venue and what baits work. The simplest way is throwing hard pellets down the edge. Um, that's why I've not set the rig up for it. It's just exactly the same, like a 414 roop, um, a carbon so you can hold it and fish through the water, strung out shot. Um, like we've covered on the hard pellet video, just throwing six mils, fishing an eight, or even throwing eights and fishing an eight depending on what fish are in your lake, if there's lots of small fish, just eight mils, that can be really good. Um, I would prefer sixes ideally, if you've got reeds and stuff there, you can get them to just, just throw them so they're in the reeds, some of them, so they sit there. And a shallow rig, just a, the basic shallow rig we've set up for um, shallow fishing with pellets, I've covered in the pellet video, that, they can, you, you can see them, they'll come slurping off the reeds and you can just fish with like a foot deep drop it right into the reeds and you'll catch some big carp like that. That is one way of doing it. Um, 
Again, you could do the same, put a big pot of hemp in there and throw meat over it if you like meat fishing, if meat works and it's allowed. Um, again, throwing some meat into the reed so you can catch shallow there or just holding your rig through and catching them as they go down. That's really effective. Um, at Magpie, like I was saying, at Magpie, at Rookery, Maggots and Casters Range Supreme, just throwing maggots down the edge and fishing, fishing the same rig, just with maggots on the hook through the water and you can catch shallow there, fishing shallow down the edge with maggots and casters can be deadly. So that's one way we would get around that. Um, the other way, it's, it's not just carp fishing now, this, it's, it's, this is more about putting stuff in the net till the carp arrive. Like I'm going to use Beastie uh, decoy as an example, there's lots of deep pegs with lots of reeds down there. Um, and an awesome way of doing it. It's what, what, I've won loads of money on it, so, so have a few other people I know. Um, and my friend actually did this on um, one of the lakes in uh, float fishing, uh, the festival, won the lake, had the wind coming into him, some reed beds there. He's throwing casters um, to catch the F1s, the barbel, the tench, the skimmers, and an odd carp, fishing shallow down by the reeds, as we covered with the maggot and caster thing. Um, just feeding it normally to catch shallow down there and as it dries off in the day and people start catching in the edge in their shallower edges or whatever change into big cupping casters full big cups of casters to keep them down now there'll already be a few got to the bottom because you're feeding regularly with casters and then not everything's going to be eaten shallow they will be building up by as the day goes on but once you feel this fish there just feed in big cupping casters to keep them down a whole big cup forcing them to go down. Fishing the, the Rube Brig, um, with, again with double worm over them casters can account for some really, really big carp. That's, again, venue dependent. You, you probably couldn't do it on somewhere that's full of little silvers, but with somewhere with F1s and, and bigger fish to target that are gonna build, you could catch a hundred pound of them during the day, then catch another hundred pound the last hour of carp. That is the preferred way I would go about it. Um, why I love fishing, you're making the most of one swim for two completely different sorts of fish. Um, really, really effective. So just recap, I think that's all we can cover with it. It is a simple way, there's nothing fancy about it. It's just watching, as always, watching what you feed. It's getting your timing right. Use other people to see when the edge fish are being caught, but don't be afraid to just give it five Five minutes, don't waste, this is, that is a good point actually, don't waste too much time down there if you're not catching. Um, I've seen people go down the edge and someone's catching, someone else will go down there and they'll sit there half hour and they might have one bite. You're wasting your time, you're waiting for them to come in. Um, I'm a smoker, so my simple thing is, before I go down the edge, I light a cigarette, Smoke my cigarette while I'm down there. If I haven't had a bite by the time it's finished, I refeed it um, and go out back to doing what I was doing, fishing longer or the feeder or the wagger or whatever, whatever I have been catching on. Don't waste your time. It is a huge, the best place to catch a big white, but if they're not there, you're just wasting any hard work you've done in, in the session already. So that is a key thing. Don't waste too much time. If you don't smoke, Count in your head, give it three minutes or something like that. Don't waste lots of time on it um, because you're completely losing all your hard work. You might have been ahead all day and someone goes down there to catch a couple. You could still be ahead of them in a match situation. Um, so yeah, don't don't give up your lead as such. We've all been guilty of it, getting drawn into, you might see tails down there and sometimes they come in and you just can't catch them. Um, and I think everybody in fishing has been guilty of sitting there trying to work out how to catch them tails and actually putting nothing in the net. So don't waste your time on it. Wait until they're ready to feed. Some days it might be, that, like say, if the conditions are right, it might only be the last 20 minutes of a match, the last 10 minutes. Um, what I haven't covered, again, some venues, like I say, decoy is a prime example. I, I always used to save the edge for later on, but again, it's why I like to feed early down there. Just that one taste of the test of pot. So I've seen people go down the edge and catch after 20 minutes. If the conditions are right, um, just give it a quick try. Again, don't waste your time on it, but it 
can give you that little head start. Um, so that is that. Let me know what you want me to cover next. Like I say, I will be getting a tips one done every Wednesday night from now on. Um, thanks as always for everyone that's been watching. Uh, if you haven't done so, as always, please subscribe. We are getting a nice building of uh, build up of subscribers, but a few more is always nice. And I will be back on Monday night with some results from the weekend. I'm only fishing one match this weekend. Um, I'm going to Rookery now. My plans have changed two or three times, but I'm off to Rookery on Saturday, and then I'm coaching Sunday. That there's been a lot of interesting coaching. Thank you for everyone for that. It does mean, being as I do actually do a normal job as well, that um, my fishing time is going to be cut down slightly. Match fishing time while I start to build a fan base with that. Um, the next few weeks is going to be one match and one day's coaching for me at weekends. Um, and then I've got some festivals coming up, so there'll be a bit more to report on. But it does mean on a Monday we'll be able to go into a bit more depth about the match I've fished. Instead of rushing through them all like I felt like I did Monday, um, we can really go into what's happened, to go through the match, what we learn, um, what I can pass on to you that's worked, what hasn't worked, what to do different. It's all about trying to help you lot learn. So um, I will see you Monday. Thanks very much for watching.